We traveled from Florence, Italy to Pisa, Italy via two trains. The first train took seven minutes and the second one hour. We have arrived in Pisa. This is Pisa. Well, at least Pisa outside the train station. And? So, every time we uh, get to an Airbnb, it's quite an adventure to find it and get inside. And this one, especially, they've left us like a, a trail of clues in order to get there. So we'll go over there and go down this field. Also, this person told us that Google Maps wasn't going to work. So that's why they gave these directions. Hopefully this is the street. I don't see a sign, but we're at the end of the road. So at this point, turn left on the internal road that leads to the gate where I live. And I think this is it. Are you in the right spot? When you want to close, okay? Okay. I'll give you the key. What is this? A uh, 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 camera. Sorry. Oh, but, ah, you went in. <laughs> <laughs> nice! <laughs> Do you want to go first you or no? Go okay. Go it's the same. So I give you the key now. Um, I, uh, you have here air condition. But it's, it's not to sleep here, another room. Um, if it's warm, you could open and uh, the I, uh, now I close because I want to, and the the wind a uh, a cold a cold will come here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so this is the kitchen. This is all your things. This is your key. Okay. So these are the stairs, and we have a small kitchen. I don't know what this is. First time I ever see anything like that. Window. It's almost like a camper. Yeah, but there's like the. I don't know. It's like a shelf. Yeah. Is there coffee in there? I don't know. <laughs> so she said we can find everything we need just by looking in. It was water. The fridge has cold water, and there's a whole bunch of waters up here. Yeah. So that must mean we shouldn't drink the water. Yep. I'm gonna take that as a hint. And there's another bedroom in here. We won't be using that. Lots of toilet paper. Sweet. Oh. Okay, this is a small bathroom, but washing machine, toilet, bidet, and the shower. Oh, it's right next to the window. That'll be interesting. Here's our bedroom. And she said, there's all the stuff you can put in. Closets, I already put my bag in there. I think we'll be going in there. Anyway, yep, that's it. So we're last gonna go find to something say. to eat. Huh? We're gonna go find something to eat. Oh, yep, yeah. the last thing to say is we are 2.3 km's about a little bit over one mile away from the leaning tower of Pisa. This is how they dump their rubbish here. Yeah, it dumps from the bottom of the can. Yeah, it picks it all the way up out of the ground. 
Yeah, those were those stations we were seeing in other places that you had the foot level. Yeah. But it goes down into the ground, into that bin. I just missed it. There was a farmer's market here earlier. You can see one of the stalls unpacking right behind me. I love farmer's markets. I love when you can get fresh food. I don't think cars can fit through there, so it must be saying that only people can go through there. I can't explain why, but we really couldn't control our excitement about seeing the Leaning Tower. So, shortly after dropping off our bags, okay, we're gonna go across that bridge. We headed out to the other side of town. This is the same river that's in Florence, the Arno River. Is that their flag? It's so cool. This is where we decide to stop. I'm gonna also get this, tomato bruschetta. Maybe I might get a pasta. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> All right, food just arrived, so that's, that's mm -hmm. lasagna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the salt and pepper and for this rocket salad. Some Parmesan and here's just my tomato sauce. Pasta. Mm -hmm. Give a quick bite here. Sorry, these are coffee. That's really good. That's probably the best one we've had so far in Italy. Let me try this. That's what I was hoping for. Got oil, sweet tomatoes, and a perfect crunch. This is awesome. I could eat this of this and be happy. This is the best ever. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Spaghetti looks different. Ooh, you're outdoing me. I'm gonna have to get some more. <laughs> It's simple, but it's so good. Is it, your, so good. Is it your best ever spaghetti? Pretty darn close to me. Yeah. Tang. Marshmallow tang. Perfect. That's my favorite. Yeah, it is perfect. It's saucy. What about yours? Is it? Looks like normal lasagna. Yeah, I think you didn't get like the best part of it. Mm. That's good. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's leaning towards us. Can you tell? Here you go. So here we are at Pisa. It's gotta be like the most filmed spot. Like everybody is here looking at it. And they're also like all filming. <laughs> There's like a whole line of people. It goes just as far the other direction. They're all like taking pictures, holding it up, leaning on it. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> this is like a, a mob scene. <laughs> and the line never stops. Luckily they have a lot of space. It's pretty cool. The Leaning Tower area is where we spent both days of our visit.
Some foreshadowing about the tower. First, Pisa got its name in 600 BC from a Greek word meaning marshy land. The foundation of the cemetery, Campo Santo, is made up of 53 shiploads of earth that were brought back from the hill of Calvary in Jerusalem. Two other towers in Pisa also lean, and the nearby cathedral and baptistery are sinking. Oh, we got the everything ticket. So if you get just the tower, it's like uh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks each. So for seven more each, you can get all these other five things. So we got all of them: cathedral, baptistery, uh, museum, all other stuff. And you have to be here at five five p.m. It looks like it's going to tip over. We better hurry. Um, we have to be here 15 minutes early. Put our backpacks in there because they're not going to let us take these out, Pisa. Okay. Okay. Is that coming out crooked? Because it really is leaning. It's leaning a lot. They're so big. They just don't look it on video or photos. It's sad. But that's the only technology we've got now, so. I think that's one of the things on the ticket and this church. Stairways up there. Gold inlay on the roof. Okay, this is the next thing on the list. Castle. Thank you. Do we know what this is? It's a baptistery. What's a baptistery? I think they dunk people. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hello. I should have known that. Oh boy, it's getting steeper. I signed up for this right after that huge lunch. Whew. Note, Galileo was baptized in this baptistery in 1565. I don't know why I expected water. You must not be baptizing anymore. Oh, that's pretty neat. What's this? Oh, what is it? I think it's where they bury stuff. Bury stuff? Bury people. Oh. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like a Roomba, but it moves along. Oh, we need one of these. We don't have a lawn. Not yet. <laughs> but one day Someday. we will. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god. Perfect alarm is. That thing would be so funny. 
Jeez, this place is like a quarter mile long. <laughs> I'm scared to think there's people inside these boats. All right, yeah, okay. And under our feet. Stepping all over it. Oh, shoot. Help. Now for the facts. The construction of the bell tower of Pisa began in 1173. During construction, the tower started leaning due to the marshy soil. The builders tried to fix it as they went higher, but it continued to lean further sometimes in other directions. So the construction was halted for almost a hundred years to think things over. Construction was finished almost 200 years after it began. When you get in here, you can really feel that you are falling this way. Yeah, it's tipped. I think that pole right there is the straight. So that's where the pole would end up if it went all the way up to the ceiling. Wow, it's way off. The tower was completed at 60 meters tall, 197 feet. But after leaning and settling, the highest side of the tower reaches a mere 186 feet, while the lowest side is 183 feet. By 1990, the tower had reached a tilt of 5.5 degrees, nearly 15 feet from its base, and enough to topple it over by most calculations. Extensive work was subsequently done to straighten the tower, and its lean was ultimately reduced to less than 4 degrees. The tower could have been totally straightened, but the city voted not to do so. Even if the incline were completely corrected, the tower would appear curved, like a banana, due to the various interventions to combat the lean over the years. On a bright note, the Allies intended to destroy the tower during World War II. American soldiers had orders to tear down any and all buildings in Italy that could serve as lookout points or nests for enemy snipers during World War II. In fact, the Germans who were occupying Italy at the time did often use the tower as a lookout, but it's said that when the Allies arrived, they were so impressed by the beauty of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and the surrounding field of miracles that they decided not to level the area. Whatever side is leaning. Most important fact about the tower is that there are 251 steps from the bottom to the top. We made it to the top. How do you feel? Not as bad as some of the things we've done. No. Okay. This is it. This DJI automatically levels things out so I can't tell if we're level. Does the world look lean? When you're up here, you can hardly tell that it's leaning. It just feels funny under your feet. And then it feels like it's moving. <laughs> All towers probably do. It's nice up here. So like you can tell that the earth is uh, not lining up with this fence at all. <laughs> it is way off.
Here's where they let you look down and it's all dirty, you can't see anything. There's a stadium right over there for maybe soccer or something. Well, there's some kind of more steps that go up. There's more. These steps are melting away. Oh, this is nice, a okay. Someone's getting in trouble. Almost. <laughs> I was just gonna get the flag. Here's a cool view of the ground. The cathedral, and then the grass and all the people. And Sandy. <laughs> Don't go out. <laughs> Ooh, I'm glad we made it out before it falls over. We, we made it safely out. It was our lucky day. Okay, this is the fallen angel statue. And then on the back of it, well first of all it's missing its brain. On the back of it is, on its wing is like a head of somebody. Yeah, it looks like Medusa's head. Cameras, even cameras, yeah. It's here. It just doesn't look like it's leaning as much as it is in real life. In real life, this looks like it's gonna fall over, but in the pictures in the camera, it just doesn't come up. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I hope, hopefully, this gets it. I'm standing straight, it's working. <laughs> Back at the grocery store, getting stuff. Carrots, cucumbers, some meats, peaches. cheeses. We got the squashed peaches. Uh, yep. Trying to figure out how much we paid for this. Okay. Grocery visit. <coughs> this is it. We got some olives, some bologna today, some cheese. Looks like provolone. And uh, got me some cucumbers and a carrot. This is our dinner. Yep, and it costs seven ninety nine for everything. I don't think we got. Oh yeah, we got some peaches too. But one thing we had the uh, previous day was one of these peaches, and it's kind of like a flattened out peach. I've never seen them until we got here, and they're really good. So. <laughs> they're sweet, they're delicious, mm -hmm. and that's the best kind of peaches I've ever had, I Gosh, think. Peaches on my life. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. So the one cork in this place is, as short as we are, watch your head here. <laughs> you will slam 
You're heading to that on the way down. <laughs> on the way up. <laughs> on the way up, not so bad because you're sort of leaning forward when you're going up these high yeah. stairs. But when you're coming down, you're leaning back because the stairs are so steep. Which you get. I, but I think if you're taller, I was thinking for taller people, they probably, if you're regular size, you probably hit your head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, because I'm not regular size. This is our second and last day here. Yeah, we just have a relaxed day. It's not much to do in pizza. Except see, <laughs> except see pizza, uh, the Leaning Tower pizza. So we're just gonna take it easy today, find some places to eat, find that Florentine steak, hopefully, where we leave the region. And uh, yeah, we'll show that to you. And then I'll go back and make these videos for you. This is the Chisea, Chisea de Santa Maria de la Spina. And what that means, de la Spina, is the original church on this location had some relics in it. And one of the relics was one of the crowns from the crown of thorns. And that's Spina, the spine. And that's what the church is named after. From from far away, this church looks like a big castle, but from up close, it's really tiny. Yeah, I'm gonna go over there and stand. Yeah. I'll try and get a different perspective on it. And this is the back. The front will look a little cooler. Yeah, it's small. We've been seeing some giant cathedrals. Biggest churches in the world, and then we see this little cute one. Anyways, there used to have a lot of problems here because of um, fires and things and floods. The River Arno is right next door here and it used to flood every once in a while. So one of the things they did when they rebuilt this church is they built it one meter higher. What's crazy is everything that we've been seeing has been so huge that like you can't even imagine you can't even put it in your mind can't absorb how big it is and the camera can't film it yeah but this is cute yeah <laughs> one of the things we see in the pizza is all these dogs there'll be dogs coming out of different places and i can see that they use these dogs mouths to uh water or watershed they get the water off the roof and that must be cool when it's raining, like they're all spewing water. This one's but, like a dog, and this one's like a wolf. And, and there's a, a yeah. A but we've been seeing a lot of dogs, like greyhounds and different kinds of dogs on some of the other um, buildings next to the Leaning Tower. Let's go around to the front. I don't know. Well, I guess we can't go in. Because this is the front. It's just pretty and cute. from the other side when we could see it from that side of the river. It looks like it was a big castle. It was the start of something over here. Like it was gonna be really like we have to pay to get in and take tours <laughs> look at the top. Yeah. That's like the mini version of all the big ones we've seen. Yeah. The thing about it that I love about it is it's not any less grand. It's just smaller in scale, but it's still an architectural wonder. Oh yeah, so we're back. We're gonna get this today. Pesteca Fiorentina. One kilogram, which is... 50 USD. Uh, one kilogram, which is 35 point something ounces. That's nuts. I'm getting a salad too, though. We can try a mixed salad. Okay. Mixed salad. So we're gonna have extra leftovers for dinner. No. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. We can take so, it all. Uh, when we were ordering, waiter said are you sure you want to get that because it's 1.4 kilograms which is 50 ounces and the price will be more because they charge you per ounce 
or per kilogram. It's going to be pretty darn big. Pretty, but he, he ate oh, just about 50 on his right. by himself when we were in Texas. If it so. tastes good, I can just keep eating forever. If okay. not, we have dinner. If it's not, we have dinner. Okay. <laughs> My sweet love. <laughs> I love you. Good. Ooh. Big. Alright. <laughs> okay. They want to make sure before we, uh, before they cook it, they want to make sure we're serious. Yeah. Because it's big. All right, there's your favorite bruschetta. I was saying yesterday that I could just eat this as my meal. It's so good. It is good. So we looked up what makes steak a Florentine steak. Well, it says that this steak will come from a, spe a specific breed of cattle. And it's also a very specific cut. So it's, uh, I guess, like a thick porterhouse steak. And they, since they measure it in fingers and not inches, they're thinking it should be about three to four fingers thick. So we're, that's what we're getting. Attention, please. It is very, very hot. Okay. Thank you. There it is. We got it cut up into little, little parts for us. Let me tell you, it smells really good. It's probably two different cuts. So you should have half and half. Okay. Look at that. It's like rare. It's supposed to be rare, mostly rare. Nice char on it. What are you doing? Already she's she's starting to reduce her her sizes. I'm saving two sizes. pieces. I'm saving two pieces on here. <laughs> oh, okay. And then and we can compare each size. Yeah. Okay. This is mostly fat, so... Yeah, you like that. Thank you. Grazie. The mix salad is right. You must compare it to your best steak you've ever had in your life. It smells amazing. Oh, so I'm trying this first. Oh, yes. Look at you go. Okay, so which cut should I try? Right yeah. or left? I think this you have to the right. Choose. This is the left. Okay, I'll... This one's small. Okay, here you go. This is the left side. It smells so good, like perfectly cooked steak. You're gonna love it. Uh, that means we're gonna eat the whole thing. If, I, if it tastes good, I'll have to keep eating. It's pretty comparable to um, Wolfgang's steak house. But it hasn't been dry aged, so that's right. crazy. Not good flavor. Oh my god. Is it the best steak? It's amazing. Is it the best steak ever? It's not as good as a, my favorite steak I've ever had, which you can't get anymore, supposedly, which is at the Stratosphere in Las Vegas. It was a Wagyu steak, so. I don't know what they even did. It was insane. But this is pretty close. The second best that I've ever had out. We've had some pretty good ones in. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, amazing, amazing. Salty and char flavor, but yet too juicy and, and rare in the middle. Perfect. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Here's my salad. Okay, he's trying the right hand right side. Right hand, it's any different. <laughs> There's so many different awesome flavors happening at the same time. I think they're both pretty much the same, but... Still good. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Fight! Alright y'all, I'm still working on my original pieces that you saw on my plate. Scott has managed to eat just about the whole thing already. <laughs> it's a special day. I did good work of the salad though. <laughs> I say, say, see if you can get some more meat off of like this section. I think there's a bunch of meat right there. Yeah. Okay, love, I will tackle that for you. Thank you, baby. I'm still working on mine, and he did it, y'all. Look at that. And he even wants me to go see if I can get more off that bone. So I have a job to do. I'll see you later. I have done my magic. I have done my magic. This bone is picked. My husband is happy. 
I actually got closer to the bun. It tasted more and more like the Stratosphere Wagyu. It was buttery and salty and super good. It was. I still have my bite to finish. But I'll be finishing that and we'll be going. Congratulations on winning that fight. Have you ever had a chance to come to Florence? Get yourself a Florentine steak. It will be a very memorable steak. Yeah, and this looks like a dark rose. And cappuccinos to finish. Mm. The thing about it is, I am stuffed. I am stuffed. But this guy is. You're the one who wanted these. You know, but I'm stuffed. <laughs> like, I'm full right now. I'm really full. You. I could eat like four tacos. Like, I could have the, the three taco deal at Del Taco right now. <laughs> he just ate all that meat, so I don't know how, where he puts it. Maybe you should be a competitive eater. Uh, for certain things, maybe. But not everything. <laughs> Alright, this concludes it. And how much was the bill? It was 93 euros. The steak ended up being 70 euros. So it was like 50 euros per kilo. We had more than like almost one and a half kilo. So if you're wondering, down the way from Pisa, down there, like what's baby. across the wall, the castle wall, we got a little market. I guess go before we got a little market back here. And Scott was saying, see the bars here. It's not for alcohol. The bars here are for coffee. Coffee bars. Okay, so we got two sizes. One's for me, one's for my brother. It's going to be a surprise gift. Somehow we'll figure out how to do it. And, um, <laughs> it's got the Michelangelo. You yeah, see in the, the corner? So, so David Michelangelo. And this one's got the little flag on it. Yeah. So <laughs> I like these. And I like the fact that it's going to be a shocking surprise gift, especially for my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Sadie looks like with junk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so Kelly, I had you and my girl. This is going to be funny. We're going to laugh together. <laughs> But wait, he's not done. Well, we were told that the best uh, uh, gelato is around here, so we got to go. <laughs> Strawberry first and then, and then chocolate. So I'm gonna get strawberry cheesecake. And I think I'm gonna get that. The Sicilia. That looks good. How is it? It's good, but I just had a bite of yours. Yours is better. <laughs> Mine tastes like orange Julius and What was cheesecake. That flavor called? Like orange Sicily or something. I like orange sherbet. So yeah, this one's really good. good. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's better than just cake one. Gonna drip, gonna drip. Better go. Huh. He loved my flavor so much, he's gonna go get himself a cup of it. He's <laughs> getting three schools. <laughs> So the cherry that I got, I should have got more of it. It's pretty darn close to the Ben and Jerry's cherry, but creamier and smoother. Like Cherry Garcia? Yeah, the Cherry Garcia from Ben and Jerry's. Mm. But it doesn't have big chunks of chocolate or anything in it. But if it did, it, they could almost duplicate it. It's really good. Oh, I like that. I like that orange. And this other one is like orange sherbet. It's so good. It's your last look. There it is. It's so leany in real life. It's so leany in real life, exactly. You just can't see it. But we're off to Milan tomorrow. And who is that? 